I built an enclosure for my laser. It's built out of polycarbonate and I did this primarily because I was getting quite a bit of anodized dust going all over the platform and it actually got all the way over to this craft tape dispenser over here and you can see how fairly there's not really much on there right now because it's been clean recently but you can kind of see the fingerprints it's not much but that's probably mostly dust and not anodized dust but anodized dust does spread all over the place if you're marking 50 or 100 parts at a time and the purpose of this enclosure is to contain that and if you happen to see my acrylic video where I marked a piece of clear acrylic by using the reflection off a piece of stainless, you probably saw that there was quite a bit of dust that formed between those two layers. That was a little bit surprising to me because you usually don't see that much dust on the workpiece after you mark. So I kind of want to contain that. I don't think this is going to be too much of an issue. It's completely removable and I'll show you how. And it didn't take too much time to build. So let's look at the design briefly. So this has 8mm thick polycarbonate, probably not something you'd want to buy, as polycarbonate's relatively expensive, but I happen to have all of these materials on hand, so I spent zero dollars building this part of it. Uh, I had these hinges on hand too, and I had some of this 80-20 structural T-slot aluminum on hand, and all of the little T-nuts and some of the hardware I used, fasteners, that sort of thing, this handle. So I just kind of put it together. Initially it was going to be fairly flimsy and I was just going to hold these four walls together with hinges, not even worry about a roof, and basically just set the thing on top of the platform here. But as I kind of went along it became a little more elaborate. So you can see that I've just connected the four pieces of polycarbonate, the uh, side panels in the back, with the T-slot. It's not actually a frame, it's just kind of there to hold two sides together. And you can see my back panel here, if we look at it straight on, there's a big hole in the top, a big U cut out, and that allows the head to move up and down. And I took about 290 millimeters out. So if you went down to, let's say, 70 millimeter lens instead of my 150, you'd probably want to go a little bit lower. The total height of this goes up to 555 millimeters, and it's a little less from the base up. My back panel and my front panel, my door, sit on the base, whereas these side panels, they'll sit on the table directly. This table's not quite flat, so I ended up having to pull this forward a little bit so the door will open and close. I've got a little handle on the door here, and a little magnet screwed into the polycarbonate door and a little T-nut with a um, zinc-plated steel screw. It'll just catch enough to hold the door. So, no big deal. This can open all the way completely against the other wall since the hinges are on the outside, and I can have pretty much full access to my base. And I also changed the design a little bit as I was going along, so to get this hinge to work on the outside, I ended up beveling the edge of this, as well as the side panel, so they would meet. So I kind of lost a couple millimeters over here. I'll put the dimensions of this whole panel up. I think I have it in, um, in a drawing format. Kind of helped me to build it. So if we look at it from the side, you can see that the height of this extends almost to the top of the uh, little tower here. And the head will actually go beyond this to about, let's say, the height of the top of this hand wheel. So that's over 600 millimeters. I think I built this to 555 plus the 8 millimeter thickness of the roof. And if I do need to extend beyond that, which I really don't in general, I can just unscrew these four cap screws holding the top on. So that's more or less the design of this. And since it just kind of has, you know, it sits on the base here and it has a big U slot in the back for the head, this whole unit will just slide right off the back. And I'll show you how that works. Have the thing slide it right over my little fixtures on the base and it comes right off. So it's free. So if I have a larger workpiece or something like that, no big deal. Put it back on. Pretty easy. So this is 380 millimeters long. I chose not to make it the full length of the base just because I couldn't figure out a reason to do that. And also I'd have to deal with this hand wheel and column back here. So from the front of the column base here to the front of this plate is about 380 millimeters and that's what I built these side panels to. And the back and front panel are supposed to sit inside of the side panels. So you may have noticed that I've got a big black box sitting right here next to the laser that hasn't been here previously. This is a WEN filtration unit and I think the model is 3410, yeah it says right there. It came from uh, Amazon, I think Home Depot also sells it, it's about $130. So in the back it's got an intake with a five micron filter and inside of that it's got two more filters or I guess it's a one piece filter that's supposed to be one micron so 
The idea of this filter is that I'm going to use a little boot that I made, and here it is. It's actually just made out of cardboard and it has a four inch intake vent that you can find in the ventilation section at Home Depot. I'll try to put a link up to it. And I'll put the pattern of this up as well. It's a one piece pattern. It's gonna slide right onto the back. And I haven't tried this yet, so I don't know if it'll work. I'm waiting for the actual four inch uh, vent to come in. It'll go right onto the back of this. And then that will go, for now at least, it'll go right into this little cutout in the back here. So as long as I'm not doing a tall work piece, it'll be okay. But in the future, I may build up this platform a little bit and draw air through the holes in the base. But first I'll see how well this WEN unit performs at removing dust from the laser enclosure. And this is pretty strong. I can turn it on high just so you can get a sense of how loud it is. And if I have a paper or something, we can see it's kind of strong. That's a UPS package or envelope. So we'll see how much suction it actually has when it's connected to a four inch hose. But that's basically what's going on here. I think it'll work to contain the dust. Hopefully it'll you know, minimize the amount that's getting all over my computer and the rest of the stuff in this room and make it a little nicer to breathe in here while I'm marking stuff. So sorry for the shaky cam. So throughout that video, the work area is relatively clean. You didn't really get to see what I was talking about in terms of anodized dust. So I'm going to throw in some old footage right here of me marking the clear acrylic using the reflection from a piece of stainless. And you can see the dust getting trapped between the two pieces of material and get an idea of how much dust is really made from just a single mark. And you can sort of get a sense of if you did mark 50 to 100 pieces that were double-sided of aluminum, how much dust you would be forming around your laser and around your computer and anything else you had in that immediate area. So if this enclosure looks like something that you might want to build for your own laser or maybe you want to improve upon it, I'll put the dimensions to the enclosure in the video description below as well as the dimensions to the booth that attaches to the WEN filter in the description below. And if you have any input or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments of the video below. Thanks for watching.